is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck scv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 subaru impreza courtesy of sioka subaru in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because there are some big changes for the 2024 impreza including there's no more sedan i'm going to give you some of the changes right up front here no more sedan hatchback only so we are in that hatchback of course for that reason also no more manual option unfortunately and there actually is a new trim level for the 2024 impreza and so many more changes to go along with all that you also get great resale value you got a legendary subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system which is a beast in the snow and it's still an iihs top safety pick as well so definitely a ton of reasons to check this one out so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there are three different trim levels now for the 2024 impreza you got the base starting at twenty two thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars excellent starting price point there sport which is the one we are in today going for twenty four thousand nine ninety five and lastly the rs which is a new trim level for the 2024 impreza starting at twenty seven thousand eight hundred and eighty five dollars so with those three trim levels there are actually two different power plants now for the impreza first power plant is going to belong to the base trim level in the sport we are in today powering this beast is a two liter horizontally opposed subaru boxer engine putting out 152 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 145 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm power being sent to all four wheels through again subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system of course originally produced for rally racing in the snow and the dirt power being sent to the ground through a linear tronic cvt zero to 60 time for this one approximately eight seconds flat with mpg numbers coming in at 27 in the city 34 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration belonging to our new trim level being the rs trim level so powering the rs is a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed subaru boxer engine 182 horsepower at 5800 rpm 178 pound feet of torque coming in at 3700 rpm power being sent to all four wheels yet again through a linear tronic cvt zero to 60 time for this one approximately 7.4 seconds so a little bit quicker there mpg numbers 26 in the city 33 on the highway still plenty respectable for an all-wheel drive vehicle taking regular unleaded fuel but for the sport and rs you do have subaru's si drive so if you're familiar with subaru you may know what that is already i remember playing around with it for years now on the wrx but essentially that's your drive modes those buttons are on the steering wheel they adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response so now that we got all of that out of the way i did want to mention to you guys we do a paddle shifters paddle shifters come in the sport and rs trims so let's go ahead and test those out first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters will react for us here all right so before we do this paddle shifter test i did want to mention to you guys there is a full manual shift mode so to speak because technically we're not actually shifting through gears because it's a cvt but just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left it's going to tell you what simulated gear you are in up on the uh, digital portion of the gauges here and uh, we got our straightaway in three two one yo It doesn't, it's, it's a CVT. It doesn't sound or feel like you're actually shifting through anything. So paddle shifters in this um, Preza here are kind of gimmicky. I probably wouldn't ever use them if I were to have them. Just going to be completely honest there. So Subaru, save yourself a little bit of money. Bring down the price and eliminate those paddle shifters. They are quite pointless with the CVT. But anyways, let's now go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test with the um, Preza having full control. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, found the perfect straightaway, a little bit of a straightaway. It's a little bit of a turn, but anyways, Impreza does have full control in three, two, one, go. Ooh, it's, it's kind of slow, but there it goes. There it goes, all right. Higher up in the RPM range, it definitely does get up and go, but dang. Not the quickest thing in the world, but that's okay. That's not what this car is for. And if you did want a little quicker of an acceleration, that's what you got the new RS trim level for anyways. But having said that, eh, 
I don't know, you would get used to it. I'll put it that way. I, I've heard that plenty of times before in the comments section. Whatever vehicle you end up getting, you do get used to uh, the different you know aspects of the vehicle, whether it be acceleration or visibility or whatever the case. So it probably wouldn't bother me. And uh, it's definitely something that you would get used to, like I said. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And braking is interesting on the Impreza because it is going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with, actually. So up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs for the base trim level. However, if you were to go with that Sport or RS trim, you're gonna get 12.4 inch ventilated front disc. So a little better stopping power with either the Sport or RS. In the back, it's gonna be the same either way, 11.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at 127 feet. As far as braking feel goes, it's actually perfectly fine. It doesn't really feel like 127 feet because quite honestly, that's kind of a below average number right there. Typically with uh, kind of sedans like this, you find around 120 feet, if not the one teens. Um, so 127 feet, it's kind of below average, but the braking feel is good. I like it. It's a little bit more on the firmer side of things, so I personally wouldn't have absolutely any issues whatsoever when it comes to the braking feel, but the touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a strut type front suspension. In the back, double wishbone type rear suspension, you will get a front stabilizer bar for that base trim level. However, front and rear stabilizer bars for either the Sport or RS trim levels. And then you also get a 10% stiffer chassis for the 2024 Impreza as well. That's one of the things super improved upon for the 2024 model year, actually. Let me go ahead and take it out of that sport driving mode here. As far as our ride quality goes, it's actually one of the first things I noticed because this is a compact car. I was expecting a brutally harsh ride quality in the Impreza, uh, like something Civic worthy, but uh, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be this smooth. It's kind of like a Corolla. So I always thought Corolla was the best ride quality in terms of um, compact cars, but I would say this is right up there with it. it tied the Corolla. So incredibly smooth ride for what this vehicle is for a compact car. So I actually really like the ride quality, believe it or not. As far as steering feel goes, it's actually fine. It's weighted a little bit on the heavier side of things, so it does better point you in the direction that you wanna go for that reason. And uh, it's not a loose steering feel, so it's better than most other compact cars as far as steering feel goes, so I don't have any issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going, I don't know, 30 miles per hour right now, so not a ton of exterior or anything coming into the cabin, but yeah, road noise, it's a little bit, but uh, wind noise is definitely held at bay. Um, it's pretty much what you would expect the compact car to be like in terms of uh, in terms of cabin noise and touching a rear visibility. This is one I was kind of like, I wonder what this is going to be like because I know the sedan always crushed it with rear visibility. It's actually pretty good. Uh, you do get a little bit of blind spots in the back two corners there as you typically do with any hatchback. Having said that, the visibility is not as bad as the Mazda 3 hatchback because I just recently reviewed that not too long ago. So it's definitely better than that. But uh, yeah, it's not bad. It, I certainly wouldn't have any issues. That rear window is actually pretty darn big for a hatchback at least. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Subaru Impreza. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Subaru Impreza finished in pure red. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one here as always let's go ahead and start with where the impreza is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter j indicating that the new 2024 impreza is built and assembled in japan as it should be you gotta love it but starting up front this is one of my favorite parts of this one really LED steering responsive headlights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. You never see that on the competition. Yes, LEDs, but steering responsive, that's amazing. Essentially what that means is when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit an alien or Sasquatch or whatever the case. So. Big safety feature right there, you gotta love it, but of course, automatic feature as well, along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night, since the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically bounce them back to low beams, and when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna bounce them back up the high beams for you there, you gotta love that. You guys can see down below, you got the LED fog lights, that's gonna come on the Sport and RS trim levels. In case you were curious about that so love seeing that as well but that pretty much rounds out the front end of the impreza here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one black window surrounds do come standard taking a look at the side mirrors black side mirrors do come on the base trim level 
body colored side mirrors of course coming on our sport trim level and then crystal black side mirrors coming on that rs trim level in case you were curious you do get integrated turn signals then for the sport and rs trim levels that's what you guys are looking at of course so i liked that and then taking a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with that base and i actually saw one of the base impresses on the lot there so i'll show you guys that real quick finished in black so that's how that looks but then 18 inch alloys for the sport and rs and yes they both do get their own individual design so i believe the rs is more of a black finish whereas the sport is more of a silver and black finish like you guys are looking at but Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile there. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, you guys will find a matte black shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, of course. You do have LED tail lights just below that though. You gotta love that for added illumination at night. Big fan there. And then just below it all, you will actually find a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away underneath, kind of on the passenger side there, so. Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Impreza when it comes to opening that rear hatch, of course it is a manual hatch. There is a button on the key fob though to go ahead and unlock it if you wanted to, but there is a rubberized button on the hatch itself. So just simply press in and lift up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 20.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping it up to an even 56 cubic feet then. Uh, cargo lighting can be found back there. Of course, there is a cargo cover for the RS. There is also though a cargo cover that is optional like we have today. I think it was $227, but that is back there as well. Two grocery bag hooks do come standard. You got four cargo tie down anchors, but then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a little bit of in-floor storage, which I did like to see because that means you can put an ice scraper or something back there, but the fix a flat. So no rear spare tire or anything like that. It's just the fix a flat, unfortunately, but Anywho, then make your way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 36.5 inches. For reference, I'm even with six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders coming on our sport trim level, but also the RS. Then rear USB charging ports coming for the RS trim level only. But then make your way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard for all trim levels across the board. Did want to mention though, if you needed a power adjustable driver's seat, that is optional on the RS trim level only. But like I said, cloth finish does come standard some of the coloring is going to change on the seats but overall it's all cloth but overall as far as seat comfort goes though that was actually pretty good considering their cloth manually adjustable seats actually didn't have any problems and the bolsters were actually pretty darn good as well so i kind of like them but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped them for the rs 10 and 2 grips we're kind of on the thicker side of things so i liked that as well then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key here. You got lock, unlock, and uh, that button to pop the rear, or unlock the rear tailgate, I should say. The unlock button, by the way, is the Subaru logo in case you were curious, but it is a key start for the base trim level, but the other two trims are going to get a keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, taking a look at the gauges here, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right course there is a digital screen front and center to control what is on that digital screen there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side there so that is pretty cool it tells you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's a digital speed readout of course trip a trip b and when you change the drive mode it's gonna kind of show you that drive mode up on the digital portion of the screen as well so yeah i didn't have any problems with the gauge it's kind of basic but it gets the job done but now taking a look at overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to be optional for the Sport and RS, but it doesn't actually come standard on any particular trim level, but alloy foot pedals for the RS trim level, dual zoom climate control, believe it or not, come standard for all trim levels across the board. That's kind of surprising because you usually don't see that. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. 
Just in front of the shifter, you have a good bit of rubberized storage there, probably to put your cell phone. You got an aux port, USB-A, USB-C up there. Uh, just behind the shifter, you got a couple cup holders, a 12 volt power outlet, electromechanical parking brake. And within the center armrest, there's actually a ton of storage in there, more so than any other compact car that I think I've seen. That is a ton of storage for a compact car at least. So well done Subaru there, but um, the, there's a lot of plastic finishes. I'll say that, especially around the uh, power window buttons and uh, this silver plastic found on the doors just above the passenger side glove box. And also there's this matte black plastic surrounding the shifter as well. Um, I think they probably could have finished that with even, it, it can stay plastic, but maybe a plastic design to it, maybe a texturized finish even, uh, just to give it a little more pizzazz, a little less boringness. So I don't know. That's just my personal opinion, Subaru, if you're watching this, but I do love the uh, the rear view mirror here with the home link control. So out the three different garage doors, I think that's like a $405 option there, if I remember correctly. So that's something I definitely like. Overall though, again, everything's kind of on the basic side of things, but here's something that's new for the 2024 Impreza. When it comes to the infotainment system here, seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the base trim level. However, 11.6 inch color touchscreen display for the Sport and RS trim levels. That's new. I love this. This thing is gigantic. Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but for the 11.6 inch screen, it's gonna be wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So you gotta love that as well. You got your climate control information up there, of course, as well. You got some car information up there. Let me go ahead and press that to see what that actually is. So that gives you driving statistics and maintenance information, it looks like. So that's pretty cool. And uh, overall, very simplistic, very easy to use. And of course, you have your radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, they're actually three sound systems, believe it or not. So four speakers is gonna come standard on that bass trim level, six speakers on the Sport and RS, but then there is a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that's gonna be optional for the RS. We don't have that 10 speaker Harman Kardon, unfortunately, we do have the six speaker. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. not bad it's a six speaker sound system um clarity wasn't the best it was a little more bass than i expected i'll put it that way but again it's a six speaker sound system guys if you wanted if you like music go with the optional 10 speaker harmony card and sound system that's all i'm saying but it was okay last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen though is when you do put the impreza in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard for all trim levels across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so like i said at the beginning of the video iihs top safety pick which is a brilliant start right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well but you also get a passenger seat cushion airbag to go along with all that in the back also you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks top pressure monitoring system but also coming standard of course Subaru EyeSight. So pre-collision braking system, uh, pre-collision throttle management, lane departure and sway warning, adaptive cruise control with lane centering. That all comes standard with Subaru EyeSight. But then the RS trim level is going to add to all of that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Impreza, I love the hatch design personally. I know not it's not everyone's taste, but I personally love it. I love the Mazda 3, the way that looks too. But uh, having said that, this has the very best all-wheel drive system in existence. So a lot of people will ask me in the comments section, which is best for driving through the snow? And I almost always say, Anything with all-wheel drive, obviously, but if you want the best, go with the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system because nothing beats that. That has been proven time and time again. This system was originally made for rally racing in the dirt and the snow. That is what this particular all-wheel drive system does. Not all-wheel drive systems are created equal. This one is the best. So if you wanted a fuel efficient vehicle like the Impreza that gets mid 30 miles per gallon and all-wheel drive at the same time, an excellent commuter car here, check out the Impreza. That's all I'm saying. But also a very affordable price. The base trim level starts at what, what did I say? 22 or 23,000. That's incredible. As far as room for improvement goes, I got a few things there, of course, as well, just to be fair. It's not the quickest thing in the world, but again, like I said, it is something I'm sure you would get used to, but I also didn't have the RS trim level. So if you wanted quicker, perhaps that would have been a lot better. I don't know. Also, no more manual transmission. I know that's only going to affect probably maybe 5% of the people looking at it at present, quite honestly. 
But if you do want a manual transmission, you always got the WRX. It's not too much more expensive than the Impreza. It is a little bit, but um, that's definitely an option if you wanted a manual. And lastly, the interior quality is definitely not as good as some of the competition. A lot of just basic black plastic in this thing. So wouldn't have minded if they jazzed it up a little bit with a, a texturized plastic finish or a silver finishes or even gloss black. Something that is not just a matte basic plastic. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Impreza in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews, because that's what we've been doing now for 10 or so years. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.